Proximity probes can be mounted internally or externally. Externally has its advantages because it gives the technician access to the proximity probe even when the machinery is running. So for example, if they wish to reset the proximity probe's gap, they can do so. On the downside, the probe is installed at the end of a long probe housing or stinger, like the model you see behind me. So they can be very difficult to loop check. Hi, my name is Mike Scott, industrial product manager for the modal shop. Over the course of the last few years, our customers have asked us to come up with a solution to loop check their proximity probes that are mounted inside of a probe sleeve, probe housing, or stinger. So we've come up with the model 9100-PPASH, which we're affectionately calling the stinger holder. It allows customers to mount a proximity probe that's uh, in the end of a probe housing over the model 9100D portable shaker table or the 9110D portable vibration calibrator for the purpose of performing a loop check, testing vibration alarms, or performing a dynamic calibration of the probe. You can even perform a static calibration or a DC probe curve as many customers are very familiar with that process. In fact, in this video, we'll go through the process of performing a probe curve on this proximity probe while it's still mounted in the stinger. We'll also test it dynamically and show how the assembly is mounted on top of the shaker. So let's begin. To install the model 9100-PPASH proximity probe stinger holder onto the shaker table, we first remove the screws that surround the shaker's armature. Next, we'll remove the plastic coverings that uh, protect the BNCs around the shaker's armature for test sensor input and monitor reference output. Next step is to take the black extrusion base and slide it up the bottom of the tower. We also want to take the forked metal support piece and install it on the bottom of the tower as well, sliding it slightly up. Then install the tower into the pocket of the shaker and press down on the fastener wedge behind the tower to make sure the assembly is tight. Any excess motion in the assembly can result in in errors in proximity probe calibration. Finally, we secure the assembly to the top of the shaker by installing the thumb screws in the previously vacated holes around the shaker's armature. Now that the tower is secure, the next step is to slide the proximity probe clamping assembly onto the top of the tower and tighten with the thumb screw on the right hand side. We can install the 4140 steel proximity probe calibration target onto the shaker's armature. And then we take the micrometer clamping assembly and slide this on top of the tower as well, tightening with the thumb screw on the right hand side. The next step is to take the dial micrometer and install that on the left side of the micrometer assembly and tighten with the thumb screw. Next, we can take our proximity probe within the stinger holder, slide that through the center of the clamping assembly, and tighten with the lever on the right side. When testing dynamically, the shaker vibrates the 4140 target, simulating machinery motion under the probe installed at the bottom of the stinger. The stinger holder can also be configured for internally installed probes that are not in a probe housing. In this dynamic proximity probe test, we can simulate machinery vibration at 3 mils peak to peak, all the way to 10 mils peak to peak, and even higher at 1800 cycles per minute, a realistic running speed. As you can see from the screen, the sensitivity of the proximity probe within the stinger is 207 millivolts per mil, which is well within calibration tolerance. At the same time, we can perform a loop check to make sure that our vibration alerts and alarms trip at the correct amplitudes. We will now do a proximity probe DC probe curve for the probe mounted in the end of the probe sleeve or stinger. The first test point will be at 10 mils. So I want to adjust the proximity probe until I see negative one volts DC on my voltmeter shown at the center of the screen. At this point, I'll reset the dial micrometer at the top left. Now we know this first test point is 10 mils. We cannot just touch the probe to the target and then back it off 10 mils for reasons that will be explained in about a minute or so. But continuing with this test, our next test point is at 20 mils. 
So I uh, use the dial micrometer to move the probe another 10 mils and then enter the voltage into my report generation workbook shown at top right. The third test point is at 30 mils, so I use the dial micrometer to see that my probe has traveled a distance of 20 mils from the target and then record the voltage. Here at 40 mils, my proximity probe has traveled a distance of 30 mils from the target and I record the voltage of negative 7.13 and so on. Here's our test point at 50 mils, negative 9.16. I'll continue to do this at 60, 70, 80, and 90 mils. It's very easy to use the micrometer in the 9100-PPASH assembly. It's very sensitive, so only a small turn will move the micrometer quite a bit. And there's very little play or looseness. If you have experience using these micrometers, you'll know that as you change direction, you feel less tension on the dial but with this micrometer, it's very tight, very little looseness in the assembly. Here's our last test point, 90 mils, negative 17.123, looks like 23 volts DC. And I press view certificate in the report generation workbook that is supplied with the 9110D. And you can see that our sensitivity was 203 millivolts per mil with a maximum nonlinearity of 1.31. To make proximity probe testing easier, the Modal Shop supplies model 9100-PPCBL01. These are test leads that connect to the Bentley Nevada proximeter and allow you to test proximity probes without disconnecting the existing cabling. The kit comes with the test leads, a BNC to banana plug made by Pomona, and a BNC to BNC cable. When performing a proximity probe curve calibration, it's important to remember that the manufacturing tolerance is 3 to 7 mils on the thickness of the overmold protecting the end of the probe, this black part here. And that is why you cannot just touch the probe to the target and then back it off by 10 mils, because that number will always be inconsistent from probe to probe. The proper way to begin is to set the gap at negative 1 volts DC and then move the probe back by 10 mils and record the DC voltage and so on. Our Modal Shop website has a video vault full of helpful videos, especially on proximity probes. One of my favorites is a video that shows what happens when we connected incorrect cabling to a proximeter, what happened to the dynamic voltage output, as well as the gap voltage and the reading in mils. So thanks again for watching, and be sure to check out more videos on www.modalshop.com.